Hi everyone, welcome to the 8th lecture of the series on linear quadratic regulator. In this lecture, we will discuss the constraint LQR and its numerical solution. Here is the overview. We start with the constraint LQR problem. Then we move on to the solution of constraint LQR in which we discuss the batch approach and the recursive approach. Let's start with the constraint LQR problem in which we consider the linear system in discrete time as given in equation number 1. Compared to discrete LQR, here the main difference is that the state and control input are constrained. In other words, the state Xk belongs to the set X, which is a subset of Rn, and the control input Uk belongs to the set U, which is a subset of Rm. The sets X and U are constrained sets for the states and control vectors, which can be defined using linear inequalities as in equation number 2, where Fx, Gx, Fu, and Gu are matrices of appropriate dimensions. Coast function is defined as a quadratic function as in equation number 3, which is similar in the case of discrete LQR. Now, the constraint LQR problem is to compute the control input sequence over the time horizon n, which minimizes the quadratic cost for the linear system as in equation number 1 with the constraints as in equation number 2. Here, basically, we have to find the optimal control input uk star from k equal to 0 to n minus 1 that satisfies the control constraints and the resulting state vector satisfies the state constraints. Therefore, we are restricting the state and control inputs to some subsets of Rn and Rm, which is usually decided by some physical constraints and upper bounds or lower bounds for states and control inputs due to safety reasons, system and actuator limitations, etc. The constraint sets are usually in the form of polyhedral sets in the case of linear inequality constraints. For example, if we consider the second order case with the linear inequality constraints on x1 and x2, which we can compactly represent as fx into x less than or equal to gx, where fx and gx are as given here. The first and second inequality can be rewritten as minus x1 less than or equal to 0 and minus x2 less than or equal to 0. That is why we have a minus 1 in the first and second row of fx. Basically, each inequality will add a row to fx and gx. We can also see that each inequality can be represented as a half space in figure 1. For example, x1 greater than or equal to 0 is satisfied by the idea of space of the line x1 equal to 0. Now, the common region which satisfies all the inequalities is shown in red color, which is basically a polyhedra with the five vertices and edges. In this lecture, we are considering linear inequality constraints, and this basically restricts the states and control inputs to polyhedral sets in Rn and Rm. From figure 1, we can observe that the polyhedral sets are convex sets, since the line segment connecting any two points in this set is also contained in the set. Next, we move on to the numerical solution of constraint LQR. Similar to the continuous and discrete LQR case, the constraint LQR problem can be solved using the following two approaches, which are the batch approach, in which the elements of the control input sequence are optimized together, and the recursive approach, in which the elements of the control input sequence are optimized one at a time. In the case of continuous LQR and discrete LQR, we are mainly following the recursive approach or the dynamic programming. This is because of the reason that, in the case of unconstrained LQR, we can represent the optimal cost and cost to go function as a quadratic function using a Riccardi matrix. This makes the recursive approach or dynamic programming easier to implement compared to batch approach. But when it comes to constrained LQR, we cannot represent the optimal cost function using a Riccardi matrix that can be computed offline. This makes the numerical implementation of recursive approach difficult. Therefore, in the case of constrained LQR, we will be mainly following the batch approach for numerical solution. In the case of batch approach, we start with an initial guess of the control input sequence, which will be modified in each iteration. In figure 2, the control input sequence for two successive iterations are given in which u i minus 1 denotes the control input sequence for the i minus 1 iteration and u i is the control sequence for i iteration. Here, the constraints on the control input are shown in blue color, which usually sets some upper bound and lower bound to the control input values, and we have to restrict the control input at each instant within the bounds. Next, we will discuss how to formulate the optimization problem for constraint LQR as a standard quadratic programming problem using the batch approach. 
for the discrete time LTI system as given in equation number 4 with an initial state x0, we can construct the solution xk for each time instant as in equation number 5. Here x1 is equal to ax0 plus bu0 and x2 is ax1 plus bu1 in which we can substitute for x1 as ax0 plus bu0 which can be expanded as a square times x0 plus abu0 plus bu1. This can also be rewritten as a square times x0 plus sigma i equal to 0 to 1 a raised to 1 minus i b u i. Following in a similar way, we have xn equal to a raised to n times x0 plus sigma i equal to 0 to n minus 1 a raised to n minus 1 minus i b u i. Now, by using vectors and matrices, the solution of state equation can be compactly represented as in equation number 6. Here, the first row gives x0 equal to x0 and the second row gives x1 equal to a times x0 plus b times u0 and so on. Now, by defining this vector as x, this vector as u, this matrix as ax and this matrix as bu, we can rewrite this equation as x equal to ax times x0 plus bu times u. This equation implies that the state sequence vector x can be represented in terms of the initial state and the control sequence vector u. Similarly, by defining qx and ru as in equation number 9, we can represent the cost function in terms of x and u as in equation number 10. Here, we can replace x with ax times x0 plus bu times u and using this we can rewrite the cost function j as in equation number 11 which gives the cost function in terms of the control input sequence u and the initial state x0. So here we can represent the cost function j as the quadratic function of the control input sequence vector u which gives j equal to u transpose h u plus q transpose u plus r where h, q and r given in equation number 12. Similarly by defining fx, gx, fu and gu as in equation number 13, the constraints can be represented in terms of x and u as in equation number 40. Here also we can replace x with ax times x0 plus bu times u and using that we can rewrite the constraints in terms of u only as in equation number 50. Now by defining the decision vector for the optimization problem z as equal to u and f and g as in equation number 16 we can represent the optimization problem for constraint LQR as in equation number 70, which is in the form of a quadratic programming or QP problem. Here, the parameters Q, R and G are functions of the initial state vector X0. Therefore, given the initial state X0, we can solve the optimization problem and find the optimal control input sequence U star. Then, the control input with constraint LQR will be as in equation number 18 in which uk equal to the k plus 1th element of the control input sequence vector u star. This is because we have defined u in such a way that the first element will be u0, the second element will be u1 and the nth element will be un minus 1. Next, we discuss the recursive approach based solution of the constraint LQR. In the recursive approach, we will be following the dynamic programming that uses a cost to go function vk as defined in equation number 20. Now, the optimal control input at each time instant can be computed by minimizing the cost to go function vk subjected to the constraints. Here, the constraint appears because of the state and control input constraints, which makes the optimization problem for the dynamic programming based constraint LQR as in equation number 22. The sets x and u are the constraint sets for the states and control inputs, and the set xk plus 1 is the set of feasible states at a time instant k plus 1, which is a subset of the set x. For constraint LQR, the optimal cost to function vk star will be a piecewise quadratic function and cannot be characterized using a matrix, which can be computed offline as in discrete LQR. This makes finding an expression for vk plus 1 star in this equation difficult and consequently solving this optimization problem for uk will be difficult. One easier method to find numerical solution for this optimization problem is to use approximations to vk plus 1 star and we can use the unconstrained infinite horizon LQR cost as an approximation to vk plus 1 star which results in equation number 23 in which ps is the steady state regarding matrix. We can also try to discretize the state and control space into finite number of points and find the cost for each state and control pairs. But this will be computationally expensive because of the curse of dimensionality. 
Therefore, in the case of constrained LQR, the batch approach will be a better option to find the numerical solution. However, the batch approach results in open loop optimal control solutions since the optimal control input sequence used are only depends on the initial state x0. Moreover, in the case of batch approach, the size of the decision vector z, which is the control input sequence vector, increases with the time horizon. Therefore, in the case of constrained LQR with large time horizon and infinite horizon problems, the batch approach becomes computationally intractable. In that case, we can go for the receding horizon implementation of the control law, which leads to the model pretty control or MPC that gives closed loop optimal control solutions. In the next lecture, we compare the constant LQR and MPC with some numerical examples. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.